The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. With Deacon Mark Campbell, yeah! Mark Amadeo, Ooh, yeah! and Deacon Tony Valdez. Good morning, one and all. Graces and blessings to you, our wonderful Iowa Catholic Radio listeners. It is October 22nd, 29th week of Ordinary Time. It's actually the Feast of Pope St. John Paul the Great. That will be pertinent later. This is the Catholic Morning Show, and I am Bo Bonner. So delightful to be here with you, along with Deacon Mark Campbell, Deacon Tony Valdez, and Aiden Pugh, Mixmaster Aiden Pugh. On the show today, we speak with our very own Aiden Pugh about his time at EWTN Radio Radio Conference last week. I, for one, hope he took notes or wrote a book report or something like this, because uh, we're going to drag him out here and quiz him to make sure that he was paying attention that whole time. I love it. I love it. Make sure he was actually working while That's I was there. Right. Not just, not just uh, sightseeing. Not, not just hanging out on the uh, company dollar. A company dime. It's, it's inflation, it's a dollar now. Then at 745, we'll be talking with Rocky McCormick, who came into the church from Hinduism while a student at the University of Iowa. Since then, Rocky has spent almost 20 years working for the Catholic Church in some capacity, most recently as the communications coordinator for the Coming Home Network. She grew up in Marshalltown and now lives outside of Detroit with her husband and three children. It's going to be a wonderful conversation. You will not want to miss it. We'll have a scoreboard update for Mark Amadeo, from Mark Amadeo, excuse me. Deacon Mark will give us a look at the news, and Aiden will tell us what the weather's up to, and we'll learn about our saint of the day, as I said, Pope St. John Paul the Great. But before we go any further, Deacon Tony, please begin our day in prayer. God, our Father, we offer you our day. We offer you all our thoughts, words, joys, and sufferings in union with the heart of Jesus. Holy Spirit, be our guide and strength today so that we may witness to your love. Mary, Mother of Jesus and the Church, pray for us. St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, protect us. Amen. Amen. Now let's go ahead and take a look at news making headlines. Deacon Mark. Thank you, Bo. Time is 7.02. Iowa Catholic Radio News brought to you by Intervisions Healthcare. Learn more at ibhcare.org. We're now in one of the peak times of the year for deer vehicle collisions, according to a story from Radio Iowa. Trooper Paul Gardner with the Iowa State Patrol in Fort Dodge reminds Iowans to stay especially vigilant for the creatures that may try to dash in front of your car. And Gardner says motorists should be especially wary in certain environments. If you hit a deer, pull over, assess the damage, and if necessary, call law enforcement. As he says, insurance companies may not cover the repairs without a police report. Gardner repeats the mantra, don't veer for deer, as doing so could have deadly results. A recent State Farm study found Iowa is one of the top states for deer collisions. It shows Iowa drivers have a 1 in 69 chance of hitting a deer based on insurance claims. Each year, around 7,000 crashes between vehicles and deer are reported to Iowa law enforcement. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arrived in Israel on Tuesday for his 11th visit to the region since the outbreak of the Israel-Hamas war. The U.S. hopes to revive ceasefire efforts after the killing of top Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, but so far all the warring parties appear to be digging in. Blinken is expected to meet with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and other top officials following Israel. He's expected to visit a number of Arab countries like lead to include Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Blinken's previous trips have yielded little in the way of ending hostilities, but he has managed to increase aid deliveries to Gaza in the past. Beginning on October 27th, the Eternal Word Television Network, or EWTN as we all know it, will launch a nine-day novena in anticipation of the U.S. election on November 5th. Catholics and all people of goodwill are invited to join in the novena to the Mother of God for the nation to pray for the country and all government officials. Each day of the Mother of God for the nation novena, there is a short scripture reading related to the day's theme, a reflection, and prayer. The novena will be broadcast on EWTN in the morning and evenings to follow along. And for those who cannot watch at those times, EWTN has a free novena ebook. It will send each day's prayers of the novena directly by email. And I would say also tune in to Iowa Catholic Radio. Is, uh, I think we will be participating in said novena, Bo. Good idea there. Uh, prayer, I'm for prayer, it. Prayer is never a bad idea. I agreed. Let's go to Mark Amadeo now for a look at sports. In sports on your Tuesday morning, last night, NFL Monday Night Football, the end of week number seven in the NFL, had a double header. In Tampa, Florida, it was the Baltimore Ravens defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the score of 41 to 31. The Ravens now in a tie for first place with Pittsburgh in the AFC North. 
with a record of 5-2, and two, while Tampa Bay falls to 4-3 and three and remaining a tie in the NFC South with Atlanta. In Game 2 out in Glendale, Arizona, it was the Arizona Cardinals rattling late in the game to defeat the Los Angeles Chargers by the score of 17-15. to The Arizona Cardinals now tied for second in the NFC West with a record of 3-4, and four, while the Chargers fall to 3-3 three and three in third place in the AFC West. Game 1 of Major League Baseball's World Series is this Friday night in Los Angeles. The best of seven series gets underway at 7 o'clock with the New York Yankees at the Los Angeles Dodgers. And this Friday night, Iowa high school football on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations. It's week number nine, and it's a Class 5A district matchup. Number one, Dowling Catholic, with a record of 7-1, travels to Sioux City and takes on the Sioux City North Stars with a record of 3-5. and five. Our pregame coverage begins at 6.30 with kickoff at 7 o'clock from Olsen Stadium on the campus of Morningside College in Sioux City. Join Matt Madring and me for the broadcast this Friday night on most of these Iowa Catholic Radio Network stations. And with your Tuesday morning sports update on the Catholic Morning Show, I'm Mark Amadeo. Thank you, Mark. And let's go to Aiden now for our first look at our forecast. Thank you so much, Deacon Mark. Weather today is sponsored by Intervisions Healthcare. Learn more at IVH care.com dot org sorry my mistake today a slight chance of scattered showers with a high near 78 tonight mostly clear conditions with a low around 51 and coming up into wednesday sunny skies with a high near 64 right now in your des moines metro we have 56 degrees winners at 56 ames and marshalltown 55 and fairfield 55 degrees and that is your weather update on the iowa catholic radio network thank you aiden okay. so deacon i I'm going to bring up something controversial you brought up in the news. Bo, I told you, not not on the morning show. This is not a controversial show. You saved that for the weekend. Well, I got to say it. I'm not a fan of deer. What? Uh, no. And I mean, we have someone. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like pinpoint like the person, but we right. found out like we have tons of deer in our neighborhood. And my dad, who lives in Oklahoma and he tries to be a good hunter, uh, he comes visits he shotgun us. Shotgun or bow? What? What type? He, of... he tries to do either. He'll do, he does okay. crossbow because he's an old man. Okay. Um, but look, special privileges. Yeah, special privileges. The deer here just mock him, right? Because they're just hanging out in our neighborhood, and they're as big as cows because they're just eating whatever they want. Well, we found out that there's someone in our neighborhood feeding the deer like you and I might feed birds, right? So they're living the high life. And uh, no wonder that when they get hit by cars, it's such a bad deal. Like, they're, like, nearly the size of, uh, like, heifers. I, I think I already know. So they said 7,000 uh, annually report deer crash. I think I already know three of those crashes this year just on the individuals that I know who have uh, unfortunately bumped into. Unfortunately, not, we, nobody is in, was in a, in a severe accident, just... Uh, you know, just one of those little little bump and scrape type of thing. I think one had their car completely totaled, but uh, it's it's a it's a serious thing. I've been fortunate, being a, a native Iowan, mm-hmm. to have never never clipped a deer. Um, and I, now I'll say that, and it, it's just, yeah, we did the fun. knock on wood sound effect, <laughs> <laughs> right? And uh, it, you know, my, my my younger sister, I think she, tw- I know at least once, if not twice, she hit a deer. So it's uh, it, it's an interesting. Uh, ph- I don't want to say it's a phenomenon, but but thing that is not uncommon around here, as we talked about, and. Yeah, I don't. Uh, we we have timber. Our property backs up to timber, so we get quite a few deer in roaming in and around our neighborhood. Uh, my son thought he wanted to take up deer hunting, and he uh, even has a deer stand in our backyard. But I think he's probably sat in it a dozen a dozen times or less in the uh, two and a half years it's been out there. Yeah, but- it, deer hunting is a bit like fishing, where like the hunting is like two percent of what's involved, and mostly it's just hanging out by yourself, <laughs> which is not. Hey, get like so. Speaking of that. If you're hanging out by yourself in your deer stand, uh, it's time to pray. And so that's the other thing in the news I wanted to bring up is uh, praying for our nation. I mean, I know a lot of people restless about what might be going on. What can I do? Feeling helpless, perhaps. But the idea that we can all get together and uh, pray for our nation as that comes up, I think, is very important. So just one more time. Were they saying you can get an ebook that you could follow along uh, with, with the prayer novena? Yeah, if you go to EWTN uh, or, or uh, just make Google EWTN Novena, you can uh, download the ebook. But uh, twice a day, they will be uh, on the television network. Uh, on the radio side, I, I didn't see that they would have anything, but uh, we, we haven't finalized. But I think we're going to incorporate it somehow into our programming. 
whether that's a pre-recorded or we incorporate it into the morning show, participating in that novena. You know, I was listening to Catholic Answers live on the way home last night, and you know they were talking about this, the, the not necessarily this novena, but just the angst and the anxiety that so many people are are uh, riddled with right now as as it relates to the election, as if the world's going to end the day after, regardless of of who wins, right? And uh, we know even amongst the Catholics, there's there's probably about a fifty fifty split on, on which which way they're going to go. Uh, or, or align with is for, as far as presidential candidates. And we always just have to remind people, Bo, that the war is won. Mm-hmm. We just have to remain vigilant and faithful in the battle that, uh, that, that we are in, involved with every single day and uh, work out our salvation with fear and trembling, each and every one of us. And, and uh, we need to be faithful citizens in, in exercising our given right to vote. Uh, so get out there and, and don't, don't let apathy um, rule you during, during times such as these, but get out let your voice be heard, and then leave the results to God. How do you, know, you like that? Well, you know who's really good at leaving the results to God is deer. Because, <laughs> I mean, like, they're just sitting there in the road, and so they're going to, you know, did you hear deer not veer or not? The deer leave that up to God, right? So, like, if you're ever a little too anxious during the political season and you need – a symbol or a sign I, about how you should act. I, I, I just pr- be a de- a, an Iowan deer. Well, and I pray that I never have to see the uh, deer in the headlights look from a deer. That's so right. That, that, there that's... might be some people going into the voting booth with a deer in the headlights look. Uh, so uh, no, you know, uh, on the serious side, I'm glad that like we're uh, going to be participating in that, and uh, you know, watch out for deer. I think we I think we've covered Those are the takeaways with, from, yeah, uh, from prayer, this opening segment. Prayer and deer. I think we got and it. And Amy's all sitting over here going, "I have no idea what's going on." Uh, uh, okay, on that note, <laughs> uh, we, we, we won't e- we won't even invite a, a poor a, a poor joke into uh, into this segment. Sorry, Amy. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we're glad that you're here to witness this, so that like we're not. Yeah, we, you, you can witness how great that all went. So oh, it's my joy. <laughs> up next, we will drag Aiden Pugh from behind the boards to hear what his field trip was like down to EWTN. Uh, for the the EWTN radio conference, so you will want to hear this. This is Bo Bonner joining you on the morning show. The time is seven twelve. Stay with us. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from independent realtor Chris Foster. Chris has served clients with everything real estate throughout Iowa since 2019. 641-891-8178 or online at the number four saleia.com. Support for programming provided by Iowa Beef Steakhouse, a true Iowa steakhouse utilizing products and produce from across the state. Family owned and operated since 1982, open for lunch Monday through Friday and dinner every night of the week. Learn more at iowabeefsteakhouse.com or on Facebook. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agencies. Serving Catholic families in Iowa, offering life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability insurance, and retirement annuities. The Knights of Columbus, the Fraternal Benefit Society, able to provide financial security to members and their families. Learn how Knights of Columbus agent Walker Borman can help at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801 or kofc.org. kofc.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarah strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsarah.org, join S-E-R-R-A dot org. Thank you, Sarah, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from John Leonetti, EOS Implementer, the entrepreneurial operating system, helping businesses and organizations clarify, simplify, and achieve their vision. John.Leonetti at EOSWorldwide.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Attention pro-lifers. Help us celebrate life by attending Pulse Life Advocates Pro-Life Christmas Gala. You'll savor a fabulous meal and Christmas entertainment. You'll be inspired by our pro-life speakers. What a great combination. The date is Saturday, November 23rd. The place is the Iowa Event Center in downtown Des Moines. Don't miss Pulse Life Advocates Pro-Life Christmas Gala. Get details at PulseForLife.org. That's PulseForLife.org. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. 
The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. It's good to be with you this morning. Bo Bonner here with you, along with Deacon Mark Campbell and Deacon Tony Valdez and Aiden Pugh. We'll get to that in a second. Are you following us on social media? You can find us on Facebook by searching Iowa Catholic Radio Network. You can also find us at, at IA Catholic Radio on X and Instagram. And we have a YouTube uh, channel as well. We'd love to hear from you if you've noticed uh, any sort of changes to our social media postings and you like them. I suppose we'll take uh, advice too, but if you like them especially, please let us know. <laughs> Coming up in the second half hour, we'll talk with Rocky McCormick, convert to Catholicism from Hinduism while a student at the University of Iowa and communications coordinator for the Coming Home Network. You won't want to miss that. But right now, let's go to our very own Aiden Pugh. Aiden, Hi. how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. I need a little bit more coffee. Well, I mean, don't we all, especially at this hour? I hope everybody's getting their uh, fill of coffee out there in Radioland. So it sounds like you were, uh, you know, it's usually people say up to no good. It sounds like you were up to a lot of good last week, uh, going down to the EWTN radio conference. So let's 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 hear it, man. What 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 was going on while you uh, were first, first of all, was, where was this at? So this was in uh, Hansville, Alabama, which is the. Uh I don't know if it's the birthplace of Mother Angelica, but it's where she set up EWTN and uh, everything there. So it was pretty cool. And that's it. No I'm kidding. So let's let's hear some more. What what was what struck you the most while you were, were down there? What what you know uh, event or uh, talk or what struck you the most first? So uh, what was really beautiful is that the very first day was a retreat, uh, effectively, and so it was uh, bringing together all of these, you know people that are in Catholic radio, everyone from speakers to uh, uh, the big dogs from EWTN, we got, and we got the engineers and the people behind the board, literally everyone, and we all came together. And it was great to uh, be together and pray. You know, we did chaplets, we did rosaries, we did mass. Uh, we got to go to mass at the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament uh, with oh, the Sisters of the Poor. I believe that's what they were. Uh, but it was very nice to go and uh, uh, experience Mass that way because their church there is very interesting. It's split in half, and I'd never experienced that before where you couldn't see the religious order, uh, and but we could hear them, and they were the choir. And so that was uh, a, that was probably the thing that was like, wow, this is a different time, different place. Beautiful. So uh, I know that you didn't quite know what to expect. Uh, I think Matt asked you this before, to, to do this even before you officially took the job. Uh, but, and we were just coming off the fall fundraiser, so uh, that's maybe a shift in gears uh, going from fall fundraiser to cloistered nuns, prayerful <laughs> you know, retreat. Yeah, so uh, I, was, I was actually just reflecting on that last night. You know, we had the Eucharistic Congress had just happened, and we were doing a lot of interviews from that. Uh, but then we had Christ Our Life, and then immediately following, we had our fall fundraiser, and then I went off to this conference, and it was just, and then to top it all off, I got to go home to my uh, alma mater, Benedictine College, and it was it, that was like just a little capstone of all of this stuff. I got to see uh, all of the great influences in my life, just kind of like summarized, and it was it was, it was very, uh, it was a very nice. Um, I would say um, welcome to Iowa Catholic Radio. Like this has been a really great season uh, in in my life. Um, what was your question? I was just thinking about how they. I didn't get sent any of this stuff, Mark. What were you? What, what did I do wrong? Hang in there. Hang in there, hang in there uh, Bo. You will. Uh, you, you may. <laughs> you may get your chance. Yeah, but uh, Aiden, talk to us a little bit about because uh, we've got Amy Harriman in, in studio with us here this morning, and she's been to the radio conference. I've been to the radio conference, but you came back and, and expressed something that I know her and I have both felt, and others who have felt as they gone down there. But talk about how. Uh, there really is a Catholic radio family that that gathers. This is like a large family reunion of cousins and stuff that you didn't even know. Talk about that experience a little bit. Yeah. So, so I I think like a lot of listeners, um, you know, so we our our station is getting closer to twenty years, you know, and so I'm twenty seven. I'm so uh, for most of my life, my life I've listened to Iowa Catholic Radio, and. Uh, in my mind, I had always just kind of like, oh, it's just the Iowa Catholic Radio. But uh, and and I did pick up later; it was an EWTN affiliate. But it is uh, we really are just like a branch 
uh, a local branch of a really cool organism. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it was, it was really awesome to know that there's like, there are peers in this, uh, organization, this, this life, this culture, um, that I can relate to pretty, pretty well. Absolutely. There's a, you know, I kind of refer to EWTN as the mothership, right. Mm. And, and then all of us as affiliates, uh, that, that carry their programming that then as we are able to sprinkle in our own programming to make e- each, each, you know, station sort of unique, and, uh, you know, you, one of the things you learned down there is you were able to, to, to mingle with other producers, other uh, uh, engineers, other, edi- you know, editors and all of mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And you got to meet the other underwriters. Whoop, whoop. Shout yeah. out to me. <laughs> and uh, the other development directors. Shout out to Bell. And it, it really is just kind of neat to see where we fit into this uh, wide network uh, uh, of radio stations. The uh, Talk about one of the other things you observed there, and that is just uh, really how where we do kind of fit in this is again, we've, we're closing in on 20 years. EWTN radio has only been around for around 27, I think somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're not too far behind the, the launch into uh, Catholic radio. Talk about uh, what you would be. So you came back with confidence, right? In that, yeah. Hey, we are, it, 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 sometimes it seems like it's a real struggle around here, but, uh, but, yeah. and it is, but we're actually doing uh, quite well. Yeah. It's, it's so, uh, like you said, it's uh, you know we we all bear our crosses, but uh, it was really cool to be there. And you know, they at the very end of it, they had um, an award ceremony, a, a recognition of of all the different affiliates and stuff. And we got to hear, uh, you know, and they do they do it by their this is our five year awards, our ten year awards, our fifteen, and and so on. And I I was looking at Matt, and I was like, how what's what's the what's the oldest award? And he said, well, twenty five years. And I said, "Oh, we're like close to that." And he was, "Yeah." You, you, so that was that was a nice uh, uh, realization. And um, you know, they uh, something else. I, I want to talk about how we fit in, but also I want to talk about how we stand out. Right. Uh, we have uh, there's a lot of people that or a lot of affiliates that have you know they have a morning show or they have an evening show, but we have a lot of shows uh, that uh, I was really. I was like, okay, so we are really uh, we we are doing pretty good on our on our local programming, uh, putting the stuff out there, which I do enjoy working on a lot. So with uh, with all of our fine show hosts, Doctor Bo, yeah, I've heard <laughs> I've heard of some of them. They're not bad. <laughs> do they talk about us? No, I'm just I'm just uh, a lot of people were asking me, hey, do you know so and so? Hey, do you know so and so? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I I, I record with them. Hey, uh, uh, and they're like, how are they doing? I'm like, they're doing great. Uh, so yeah, it was. It was pretty cool. You're you're infamous or, or famous. I'm not really. We're not sure what it is, Bo. You but, can be uh, both at, at the same time, depending on the time of day of who you're talking to. Exactly. I think exactly. what's interesting, just not. You know, I, I didn't get to go, but just to say this: that if you start thinking that Catholic Radio, you know, 25 years of some of these affiliates, radio, of course, in some people's mind is like old timey, but the 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 way in which 25 years ago it sort of reemerged on the scene as this way for Catholic evangelization. Um, I just think it's, you know, the church is ever ancient, ever new, and I know that, you know, broadcast media is not ancient in any way, but the idea of taking something that the rest of the world maybe was like, ah, we need to move on, it's television time, it's, you know, uh, the internet, and really claiming that sort of space that was vacated in some ways in radio to be that consistent message, I think that's one of the the greatest uh, testaments um, of Catholic ingenuity as it is, when people were starting to abandon the medium of radio, and they haven't done it completely, of course, but that we really stepped up and said, we will make sure to use this opportunity, this space, to evangelize not only here in Iowa, but as you said, with all those EWTN radio affiliates. Well, I had a great opportunity last night to uh, to, to present to the Catholic Daughters of America, but uh, they're meeting in Ankeny, and again, if any of those who are listening, thank you again for the invite. You know, And I shared with them that radio, d- despite maybe it's... it's it, decline with, with some dem- demographics as far as listenership um it, it, it's really a, more about there's just more places to consume mm. media right but radio still stands out as the most trusted source of information people still tune into radio for that precise reason is because it it, it, it is viewed as more trusted and I, I was sharing with them that like how fortunate we are uh to be able to actually have that that i guess foregone conclusion that we're a trusted source because of the the outlet that we are uh, using for evangelization, but we're actually broadcasting the truth, 
right? And, and that we can invite people that have different opinions or different or questions about the, the Catholic faith or even disagreements about the Catholic faith. We can invite them into a conversation. And this is not like any other talk radio format where it usually delves into name calling or calling somebody stupid, right? We, we, can, we will actually, in, in the, across the shows here, national or syndicated, or syndicated or local, we, we, we invite people into a dialogue where we can talk about those differences and uh, agree to, to walk away and, and shake hands and, and say, peace be with you, right? And, and may God have mercy on your soul. God, but pray for <laughs> each other, right? It, right. Truly and uh, uh, with, with firm conviction of heart. Well, Aiden, uh, any last uh, observations you want to make? It's so wonderful that you were able to go and then uh, share some of these observations of what you saw uh, down with the radio listening audience. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just to touch on what Deacon Mark was talking about, something that I – rediscovered while I was there and, and nobody talked about this. It just really struck me. Radio is free to listen to, mm-hmm. which I think uh, uh, me just being a Gen Z and, 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 you know, uh, and regretting that yeah, 27 uh, <laughs> rubbing that in earlier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we get it. It's <laughs> everything. You're just a is, kid. <laughs> everything is a subscription these days. Yep. And if, if I have a radio in, in my car, I can listen to it. Um, but a couple of different takeaways I want to get to but just before we, we head off um, is uh, something that I heard from uh, Bishop Frank Caggiano. I, I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he had a podcast called uh, called uh, Let Me Be Frank. Uh, so he's a bishop Hey-o. in Connecticut. And uh, he was great. He was the keynote speaker. And uh, something that he said that really struck me, and it was, it's not uh, what you transmit, it's who you transmit. And uh, so I just really liked that idea of like, you know, here behind the scenes, we're always talking about uh, content and the schedule and and getting everything put together to keep on going. And uh, sometimes I forget about the who. And so uh, it was it was a nice reminder to be like, as long as everything we're putting out there is Jesus, Jesus is the quality. And so and we try to make it as good as we can. But even in. Uh, even if you have a rough show, if Jesus can communicate to somebody with that show, uh, it's it's great. So, um, but uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, another thing, it, we also went to the JP two Eucharistic Center. So my son's name is John Paul uh, after JP yeah, JP two, and that was really great. And as as soon as we went into the uh, went into it, it was it was a very cool exhibit. And uh, I was like, man, my wife needs to be here. So, <laughs> so we're probably gonna go back. Well, that's wonderful. So that's Aiden Pugh, everyone, our mix master behind the boards. And also, I, I'm going to say I'm going to give you an A uh, for that book report. Thank you for reporting Thank back you. out uh, for uh, going down to the EWTN radio conference. Uh, coming up, we'll have another look at the news, sports and weather, as well as our saint of the day, Pope St. John Paul the Great, who needs no introduction for most of us. Let's go to our gospel reflection for today t- uh, on Tuesday, the 29th week of Ordinary Time. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, Blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, this is Father Nick Smith, parochial vicar of Christ the King Parish in Des Moines. The Lord calls us to be like his devoted servants who wait his return, even waiting to the second and third watch. This becomes difficult, this task of waiting, especially when we have to wait Late, when we feel like the Lord is long delayed in answering our prayer or in coming again, even the second coming. What motivates the watchfulness of these servants? It's not only duty, it's not only obligation, but it's love, devotion to their master. This is what moves them to continue to stay watchful, even above and beyond what we would consider the call of duty. The Lord has done so much for us. He calls us to wait for him. Because when he comes, even if it is in the second or third watch, even more blessed will be the gift that he brings to those who are prepared, his devoted servants, not just those who are waiting out of duty, but those who love him. 
Let us seek to love the Lord more each day, to be those devoted servants. May God bless you, and let us continue praying for each other. Iowa Catholic Radio, connecting listeners to Christ every day with people like you. Hi, this is Patty Orger from St. John's Parish in Adel. Thanks for listening to Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Valley Eye Clinic. Comprehensive eye care, contact lenses, glasses, diabetic exams, and eye emergencies. On call after hours, 515-223-1266. Learn more at valleyeyeclinicdsm.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Farm Bureau agent Cindy Schulte, an authorized independent agent for Walmart Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa, an independent licensee of the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association. Learn more at 515-226-2111 or cindyschulte.com. Steve Havman, CEO of St. Vincent de Paul here, and what an incredible 100 years it's been as we are now serving over 33,000 of your neighbors with food, clothes, workforce training, and reentry services. That's so many people, Dad. Did that include kids, too? Yes, Zoe, that includes kids, too. Please donate to our thrift stores and pantries. Donate, volunteer, shop. St. Vincent de Paul. Learn more at svdpdsm.org. Thank you, Society of St. Vincent de Paul, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. To all our family of listeners, we want to say thank you for your generous support during Iowa Catholic Radio's fall fundraiser. Your gifts make all the difference in ensuring the future of Iowa Catholic Radio. If you didn't get a chance to pledge, it's not too late, and matching dollars are still available. Donate now at iowacatholicradio.com to help continue this important work of connecting listeners to Christ. We are family. Again, thank you for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Bo Bonner here with you along with Deacon Deacon Tony Valdez and Deacon Mark Campbell. Remember, if you miss an interview or segment or maybe the entire show, you can hear it all by visiting the Catholic Morning Show podcast page at iowacatholicradio.com. Make sure to join us for tomorrow. We have another slew of guests that we're going to be talking to. uh, And so I will be back with you. It'll be wonderful to have you here. Uh, right now, let's go ahead to, uh, to Deacon Tony, excuse me, for prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Here's a look at the news making headlines. You can mark. Thank you, Bo. Iowa Catholic Radio Time is 7.32. News this morning brought to you by Construction Professionals. Learn more at cpcustomhomes.com. Catholics in Atlanta plan to fervently pray and make reparation ahead of enduring an upcoming Black Mass, a sacrilegious event planned for October 25th by the so-called Satanic Temple. Archbishop Gregory Hardemeyer of Atlanta in an October 8th memo urged all Catholics to counter the Satanic Temple's attack on the faith through prayers of reparation and penance, calling the planned Friday event a blasphemous and obscene inversion of the Catholic Mass. The Satanic Temple, which, according to its website, denies the existence of God and Satan, is a political activist group known for protesting religious symbolism in public spaces and mocking Christianity by offering unbaptism and hosting black masses. The Des Moines venue where hundreds of sports and other events are held is getting a new name. The Wells Fargo Arena in Iowa Event Center will be renamed the Casey Center as the Ankeny-based convenience store chain signed a 10-year deal for the naming rights. The 17,000-seat arena opened in 2005 and took over hosting the Boys and Girls State Basketball and Boys State Wrestling Tournaments from Veterans Auditorium. It has also hosted the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament multiple times. The name will be changed on July 1st, and it is the first naming rights deal for Casey's. Started with stores in Iowa and now has them in 16 other states. And it's official. Olivia and Noah are keeping their titles as the number one girl and boy names among Baby Center's parents. In fact, almost every top 10 name from 2023 is holding steady in 2024 with some noteworthy exceptions. Ellie joins the top 10 girl names for the first time ever at number 9, bumping Evelyn down to number 11. And Asher is back in the top 10 boy names at number 9 after a year away, while Luca is 
out at number 12. There are a few names on the list that made uh, Baby Center history, reaching the top 100 for the first time. Walker came in at number 79, Bennett, number 84, Adriel at number 100 for boys, and Ember for num- uh, came in at number 90, and Oakley at number 96 for girls. How do you feel about that, Bo? I'm just waiting for Bo to make the comeback. I'm, I'll, I'll be old by that time, but it'll be fine. It, it's it's uh, it, Sarah came, fell out of the uh, fell out of the top 100. So that feels it, it like had the, been in the top 100 for over 60 years. The, I think the 80s and, are officially over. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Mark Amadeo with sports. In sports on your Tuesday morning, last night NFL Monday Night Football, the end of week number seven in the NFL, had a double header. In Tampa, Florida, it was the Baltimore Ravens defeating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the score of 41-31. to The Ravens now in a tie for first place with Pittsburgh in the AFC North with a record of 5-2, and two, while Tampa Bay falls to 4-3 and three and remain in a tie in the NFC South with Atlanta. In Game 2 out in Glendale, Arizona, it was the Arizona Cardinals rattling late in the game to defeat the Los Angeles Chargers by the score of 17-15. to the Arizona Cardinals now tied for second in the NFC West with a record of 3-4, three and four, while the Chargers fall to 3-3 three and three in third place in the AFC West. Game one of Major League Baseball's World Series is this Friday night in Los Angeles. The best of seven series gets underway at 7 o'clock with the New York Yankees at the Los Angeles Dodgers. And this Friday night, Iowa high school football on most of these Iowa Catholic radio Network stations. It's week number nine, and it's a Class 5A district matchup. Number one, Dowling Catholic, with a record of 7 and 1, travels to Sioux City and takes on the Sioux City North Stars with a record of 3 and 5. Our pregame coverage begins at 6 30 with kickoff at 7 o'clock from Olson Stadium on the campus of Morningside College in Sioux City. Join Matt Madring and me for the broadcast this Friday night on most of these Iowa Catholic radio network stations and with your tuesday morning sports update on the catholic morning show i'm mark amadeo thank you mark and we uh discuss no time is a good time for goodbye bo so <laughs> let's uh let, let's go to aid now for a look at the weather for today thanks so much deacon mark weather today is sponsored by intervisions Healthcare. learn more at ivhcare.org today a slight chance of scattered showers with a high near 78 Tonight, mostly clear conditions with a low around 51. And coming up into Wednesday, sunny skies with a high near 64. Right now near Des Moines Metro, we have 56 degrees, Winterset 55, Ames and Marshalltown 55, and Fairfield 55 degrees. And that is your weather update on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Thank you, Aiden. Sorry for making 80s references that you don't get, but here's a reference to the 80s that you will get, our saint of the day. This is your Saint of the Day on Iowa Catholic Radio. So today's saint, of course, is Pope St. John Paul the Great, who was born in Poland in 1920, and by the time he was 21, had lost both of his parents and his older brother. His academic career was cut short by the Nazi invasion of Poland, though instruction in the priesthood was forbidden. He joined an underground seminary and was ordained. After the war, the Soviet Union, of course, took over Poland, Catholicism was treated as a threat to party rule. The Soviets allowed then Karl Wajita to, I messed up his name, to be named an auxiliary bishop, thinking him a harmless academic. As a bishop, Karl contributed, Carol, excuse me, contributed heavily to the documents of Vatican II. Then he was named Pope, and he began to travel the world. He visited 124 countries, including a spot only a couple miles from this very studio, of course. But his visit to Poland in 1979 was perhaps the most impactful, as it is credited with ending communist rule in that country. He wrote over a dozen encyclicals and five books, The Theology of the Body, which began as a three-year stint of speeches at Wednesday general audiences, continues to provide countless gems of wisdom and may not be fully unpacked for decades. One particularly important moment in the papacy of John Paul II was his assassination attempt in 1983. The Pope credited Our Lady of Fatima with saving his life. The Holy Father had a deep devotion to the Blessed Mother, which was strengthened even more after the incident. John Paul specifically made a point of visiting his would-be assassin in prison and offering forgiveness. Pope Benedict XVI beatified John Paul II in 2011, and Pope Francis canonized him in 2014. So we ask Pope St. John Paul the Great, pray Pray for for us. us. 
Well, I have to say uh, it's powerful. We've been having a lot of John Paul II, uh, like we, we talked about his children's book yesterday. Um, Aiden got to talk about going to the shrine. Um, before we get to the break here, though, I'm going to put you on the spot. You can, All right. Mark. Did you, uh, were you, were you here and around and like cognizant when the, the big mass out at uh, Living History Farms occurred? I was not. I was, uh, let's see, it was, I would have been about five years old. You don't and, remember everything from uh, being five? Uh, not quite everything, but I do know my, my older sister was uh, one of those in attendance. My dad took her. Um, and, but, I, yeah, I don't really have any recollection of uh, any, you know, anything going on in our home that uh, and brings back those memories. But I, I do find it very interesting to go back and look at some of the photos and, and to see how that area of the city has changed. Oh, yeah. You know, growing up around there. And it's just hard to imagine the interstate you know what is now the interstate lined with uh, with vehicles as hundreds of thousands of people descended upon a little old living history farms. It was very things. interesting for us when we moved out here because we were like, "Where where did this occur?" And everyone's like, "Remember when you ate at Machine Shed for breakfast once?" <laughs> right, <laughs> like you know, right out the window there. I'm, I'm taking it. Machine Shed wasn't there when the Pope was around, though. Well, in the uh, recent uh, Iowa Public Television documentary, of course, the oh, bishop yes. had the uh, producer of that documentary on his show here recently. Uh, I have not yet seen it. You can stream that uh, that documentary online for free at Iowa Public Television, and uh, I hear it's very, very good. In fact, you uh, there are some very familiar people in there who are uh, interviewed at, at a much different time and looking much, much younger than they do today. <laughs> much so. different. Well, of course, if you are in the Des Moines area and you go to the Cathedral of St. Ambrose, uh, the altar in the back, uh, the, yep. the, the small altar, that was the altar that was used. So it's interesting to think, right, that uh, that's a relic of a saint. Third class relic. Right there. The, uh, the, the chair that is there, I, I, uh, I have my photograph in it just so I can say I did, right? And there's also some out in uh, at St. Patrick's in Cumming where he visited also when he was here, mm-hmm. uh, some great uh, items out there for... Uh, uh, yeah, for, for, for reminiscing, for venerating, and just it's just a, a really a remarkable thing that was even in its time not really understood, I think, of how impactful it would be so far into the future that we look back upon that day with just marvel and gratitude for uh, the Pope making a visit to, to Des Moines, Iowa. Well, again, may he keep us uh, in, in his prayers uh, and watch over Iowa and Iowa Catholic Radio. So coming up in just a few minutes, we'll be talking with Rocky McCormick, who came into the church from Hinduism while a student at uh, the University of Iowa, speaking of Iowa. Since then, Rocky has spent almost 20 years working for the Catholic Church in some capacity, most recently as the communications coordinator for the Coming Home Network. She grew up in Marshalltown. She lives outside of Detroit now with her husband and three children. It's going to be a wonderful conversation, so stick around. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Here's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines this Tuesday, October 22nd. I'm Anne Marie Cox. Today is the feast day of St. John Paul II, the first and only Pope to have visited Iowa. Watch a special running every day this week at 4 o'clock on WHO TV with interviews, photos, and great memories of the day he visited 45 years ago. This Saturday, Father Ross Parker will be visiting with all those cyclone men who are thinking they may be called to priesthood. This is an informal day and a great way to spend time with peers who are also thinking about their vocation. Contact Father Ross for more information or to register. He's at vocations at dmdiocese.org. Also this Saturday, we have an Andrew dinner planned for young men in the Des Moines area who are thinking about the priesthood. Bishop Johnson will be there to enjoy a meal and share about what seminary life is like. To register, email vocations at dmdiocese.org. That's your news from the Diocese of Des Moines. Have a great day. Thursdays at 9 a.m., it's Catholic Women Now with Julie Nelson and Chris Magruder on Iowa Catholic Radio, iowacatholicradio.com, and on demand on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Connecting listeners with Christ. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for programming comes from Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, offering repairs, installations, and maintenance for the whole house, including heating and cooling systems and all things plumbing and electrical. Learn more at goldenrulephc.com. 
Got a question about the faith? Ask a priest. Email your question to contact at iowacatholicradio.com. Then tune in to the Catholic Morning Show Thursdays at 7.15 to hear the answer. Ask a priest. Thursdays only on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. The Catholic Morning Show on Iowa Catholic Radio. Bo Bonner with you this morning. Thank you again to all of our business underwriters. Visit the iowacatholicradio.com business sponsor page and be sure to support the businesses that support your Catholic radio station. Maybe take a minute to send an email or make a phone call just to say thank you for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Once again, thank you for everyone who makes Iowa Catholic Radio possible. Let's go now to Rocky McCormick, convert to Catholicism from Hinduism while a student at the University of Iowa and communications coordinator for the Coming Home Network. Rocky, thank you for being on the show. Good morning. How are you, Bo? Hey, for morning, I'm doing great, but it's wonderful to get to uh, speak with you, and I really appreciate you uh, joining us. Uh, like I said, I, I think you were just dropping off kids. Is that uh, what, what, were, what you said? I was, yep. I just got home from dropping kids off at school. Well, so. I, I appreciate you making time for us. So look, um, we're Iowa Catholic Radio. Iowa runs through your veins. Uh, so l- let's does. let's take us to uh, the University of Iowa and uh, what what precipitated to have someone who uh, was raised Hindu become Catholic. Yeah, you know it's it's a long story, so we'll make it short. <laughs> nice. I I grew up in Marshalltown, which is a, a smaller town in Iowa, not terribly small, but in central Iowa. And you know, I was Hindu growing up in a in a small Iowa town, which was isolating at best. Uh, didn't have a lot of other Hindus around me. And so I always was kind of searching for this place to belong. Like, where am I? What What is my purpose? Um, and so when I got to Iowa, I kind of searched for that in not the most constructive <laughs> of ways. <laughs> nice. <laughs> out there, you know? um, I ended up with alcohol poisoning at 17, um, which led to a whole spiraling, uh, questioning God, like, you, I'm alive. Why am I alive? What is your purpose for me? And I ended up actually in California. I think it was my sophomore year of college over Christmas. My parents are Hindu and my quote unquote godparents were Jewish. And so we were visiting them in California. And so on Christmas morning, we went to Brother Benno's. Um, it was like a homeless shelter, a soup kitchen run through the monastery there, Hmm. Catholic monastery. And I ended up serving next to a young Baptist gentleman Hmm. who was there for his 21st birthday, and that was very unlike what my friends did for their 21st birthday. (laughs) Especially in Iowa City, it was the bar crawl. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) So I was, you know, asking him, and he was Baptist, and he explained that you know, he did not want to be pressured to drink, and he explained his faith and talked about how Jesus had died for him, and this was just a small way of how he could honor his Lord. Um, and I wasn't unfamiliar with Christ at that point, but certainly didn't have any kind of real experience or understanding. But that was the first time I really had a full-on experience of Jesus. And it was, I'd been reading a little bit of Scripture here and there in Matthew 25, really came alive for me, in the least. Um, and so just this real tangible experience. And so I continued searching, and my best friend at the time was Catholic. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, and so she invited me to come to Mass with her shortly thereafter, um, probably about a year after that. I, I don't really remember. I was just kind of going to different churches. I even went to synagogue. Like I was really trying to figure out who is God, what is my purpose. Um, and she invited me to Mass with her, and I just remember this profound experience at the elevation of the Eucharist, where I knew Jesus was real, and he had called me to himself. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, um, that, that to me, like, sorry to interrupt, but the, not only that there's that sort of sacramental experience, experience mm-hmm. that, you know, is singular, but it's, there's really a, a, an ecumenical affair uh, uh, that, that sort of helped you, guide you into that moment uh, where where that sort of, if, you know, what is a singular event had so many antecedents leading up to it. Oh, very much. And I should go a little further back. When I was about 13, um, I had a Baptist family that had moved in down the street, and her daughter, their daughter was about a year younger than me. And so, you know, good Iowa hot summer, what kids do, we sit on the back 
deck drinking lemonade or whatever it was, and we were talking, and like a good 12-year-old Baptist girl, she asked me if I knew Jesus. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, I know Santa Claus. <laughs> like, I know about Christmas. Um, and so she asked if I wanted to know him and explain, you know, that he makes everything easier, which if I see her again, I will have to take issue with that. Because <laughs> um, a, life, a life of faith is, is not easy. Um, right. But, you know, we're 12 and 13. This is not highbrow theology. And, you know, I'm 13. I'm kind of miserable in my teenage years. I make it easier. Yeah. I'm like, sure. And so she had given me this prayer to pray. It, when I went home at night, and it was just, Jesus, I want you in my life. Mm. And so I prayed it, and nothing happened. But I firmly believe, hindsight is twenty twenty. I firmly believe that that is when God began really opening doors and using my own pain, my own suffering, to lead me, one, to the suffering of others, and through that, to himself. That's, you know, so I'm, I grew up Southern Baptist. I'll, I'll, I'll tell my parents who are Southern Baptists that, like, Baptists are great for getting people in the Catholic Church. That'll, that'll sit well with them. No, but, uh, um, so you, you do get a chance. In our conversation. That's right. Um, you, you get a chance in, to work, uh, with conversion stories yeah. quite a bit. So, um, yeah. th- does that seem like a, another thing where you, you were being drawn to precisely, uh, th- th- to work in this field of, how God uses the raw material of our life to bring us to these points of conversion. Oh, 100%. And all of my time in ministry has really been working with young people, and even my non-ministry work was with young people. And God has really placed that desire in my heart to help people to see their potential and the plan that He has for them, and to see those in the smallest details of their lives, how God is weaving together their story to bring them into the fullness of who He has created them to be. And as we believe in the fullness of faith in the Catholic Church. Well, um, yeah, you, you know, your your title is uh, Communication Coordinator, and one of the things yeah. that I liked about this, and like, I, I, I had a chance to be on uh, the Coming Home Network, and I'm yeah. trying to think if that meant that you and I, uh, that, that, did you help arrange me uh, to, to get out there? No, that was Matt, who also is wanted me to remind you that he still wants to do a show with you on something musical, and I don't remember. What. Oh, right, on Red Dirt Music, yes. Well, you, yes. you make sure to yes. give Matt as much grief as possible and tell him that uh, that's my special always. gift. <laughs> but <laughs> Always. <laughs> always. But so, co- you know, communication yeah. coordinator, I know that that means like, oh, you're coordinating communication, but there's a way in which that, to me, it was the essence of my life as a convert is uh, mm-hmm. this communication and communion that we seek out um, mm-hmm. and, and, and like explore in all sorts of ways, uh, that coordination, like how those things get drawn together. And mm-hmm. one of the things I liked about being on the Coming Home Network is you got to think about this sort of stuff. And, you know, you know it as a convert, and especially people have asked you to talk about it before, like my experience. Okay. But when you go there and you talk about it, it is that sort of coordination. The coordinates come together and integrate. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's one of the most wonderful things that something like Coming Home Network and conversion stories allow people to hear. Not that converts are like especially special or something like this, no. but that God's work really is this coordinating, integrative communion experience. Well, that is our role as disciples. You know, that is the gospel mes- message. It's to communicate the love of God the Father for us through Christ his Son. Um, and so it really is, and I think the beauty of working with all these conversion stories or being able to see them and hear them and read them and work with people as they're writing them up is to be able to see just the multitude of ways in how God works through everyone's life. But there is no one plan, there is no one timeline, but every, every detail God will use for His glory and for our good. Well, that's, uh, it, it's hard to put it more beautiful than that. So, um, Rocky, if you don't mind, point to people, of course, where, uh, I mean, I think a lot of people know about the Coming Home Network, but just to make sure that if people yeah. want to know not only where they can go see that, but also remind people to watch yours, because yours is specifically good. And I want to make sure people get a chance to, to, to have more than eight minutes about your conversion story. <laughs> well, sir, you can go to the Coming Home Network website, which is chnetwork.org, um, and if you go to our staff bios, I'm linked, but my episode is linked to my bio there. And they can also find me on Instagram as kind of where I live online. Um, but to another point. Well, I... Uh, you know, oh, keep going. Sorry. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I was going to say, 
I think the other thing that we've really been trying to do through the Coming Home Network is to make those connections proactively mm-hmm. um, because we come at this from a slightly different perspective. We're not coercing anybody to become Catholic. Like you said, we're not triumphal about it, and we know that it's on God's timeline. But we want to walk with people, and we want to help our parishes walk with people because it's such a monumental task. And so we actually just recently launched a parish outreach mm. program, too. So if anybody listening is involved in OCIA or RCIA or whatever the letters are at this moment, <laughs> um, then please, please check us out, too, because we have so many resources available for free, both that- for those that are curious wanting to come into the church and those that are walking with them. Well, I, I appreciate it so much. Rocky McCormick, uh, communications coordinator at the Coming Home Network. You want to go watch her episode and look at all the wonderful things they're doing. One more time, thank you for taking time out of your day in the morning to be with us, Rocky. All right. Thanks, Bo. Have a great day. Thank you. So, folks, we're coming to the end uh, of our show. And I one more time, just a shout out to say... Uh, Coming Home Networks allows people who talk too much like me uh, plenty of time and plenty of runway uh, to talk about things. Um, But if there's one thing that being a convert allows you to do, again, I don't want to get into convert superiority and all these sort of silly fights like this. But it's always humbling to get to talk to people about one's convert story and then hear how much it means to them. Right. There's a way and sometimes you can get a little bit tired of uh, I know people won't believe it talking about yourself. Uh, But when you do that and then you're able to see that other people resonate, especially people who aren't converts, resonate with things that are going on in your life, it's such a wonderful feeling. And uh, I feel blessed to to be able to do that. I feel blessed to be here speaking on air with all of you. And I'm glad to have uh, been here for one more wonderful show. Uh, So speaking of that, that brings us to the end of our show. Deacon Tony, can you close us in prayer? May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit come down upon all of us, protect us all from evil, and bring us all to his everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. So make sure to keep listening. Catholic Connections with Teresa Tamio is up next. Thanks again for joining us today. We'll be back again tomorrow at 7 a.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. My thanks to Aidan Pugh, Deacon Tony Valdez, and Deacon Mark Campbell for producing the show, well, and being on the show. I'm Bo Bonner. Please continue to pray for us, and we'll be praying for you. May your day be blessed and be confident in Christ's mercy and his love.